Hello friends, this video on breathing and exchange of gases part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about how the process of respiration takes place in different organisms. Now when I say different organisms, uh, I mean... So now respiration as a process is common to all living organisms, whether you talk about plants or well as anim or animals. So in plants, respiration happens in different way. When I talk about, when I say respiration, I mean the exchange of gases happens through the tiny pores called stomata which are present in the, on the leaves or through the lenticels which are present on the stems. The lenticels, stomata, root hairs, they are the means of gaseous exchange. Whereas in case of animals, Again, in animals, you have a variety of animals. We, you might have insects, you might have the aquatic animals, you might have birds, you might have complicated animals like human beings. So different animals have different mechanisms for exchange of gases as well as so that they can carry out the process of cellular respiration. So here we will look at some of the different processes used by different animals. Now, if you talk about aquatic animals, for example, uh, if you take the example of fishes, so how do they undergo respiration? Like, for example, in case of human beings, we being terrestrial, we breathe in oxygen from the air. Air has a lot of oxygen and we tend to take in oxygen from the air through our nostrils and that goes into the lungs. So that is how oxygen is taken in. But in case of aquatic animals, they breathe in oxygen which is dissolved in water. So water is what? Nothing but H2O. So water also has oxygen dissolved in it. So aquatic animals take in water and they tend to absorb the oxygen which is dissolved in water. Now the rate of breathing of aquatic animals is quite high when compared to that of the terrestrial animals. That is because the amount of oxygen which is dissolved in water is much less than the amount of oxygen which is present in air. Now since if oxygen is less in the water, so what will the animal do? The animal will try to breathe faster so that it can take more oxygen. For example, let us suppose if... Uh, Say this is the time duration and you are supposed to breathe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you are breathing only 5 times. Okay. Now let us suppose the amount of oxygen is reduced and your time frame remains the same. So what may happen? You might have to breathe these many times so that you can absorb more oxygen by breathing more number of times. So the rate of breathing of aquatic animals is higher because the amount of oxygen dissolved in water is quite less when compared to the amount of oxygen which is present in air. Now one example of aquatic animals would be fishes. Now they have specialized organs called gills which help in absorption of oxygen. Now what do these gills do? They they are the organs which help in absorbing the dissolved oxygen. Like how human beings have uh, lungs, similarly they have gills. So here you can look at a closer picture of the structure of gills. So these are the gill filaments, the red colored structure and these are known as the gill arc. So these are arc shaped structures. So this actually, you would have seen that when a fish is uh, swimming in the water, the gills tend to move. So they open some spaces through which some water enters, they dissolve the oxygen and the remaining water is thrown out. So that is how they take in oxygen. So that is their mechanism because now every animal have a different lifestyle. For example, fishes live in water. So they should have a mechanism by which they can take in water, oxygen from the dissolved which is dissolved in water. Whereas the terrestrial animals which do not live in water, they again need to have some specialized uh, organs which can help in absorbing oxygen which is present in the air. So terrestrial organisms use the oxygen in atmosphere for respiration. So that is fine. Now the question is how do they take in that oxygen? So do all terrestrial or animals have specialized organs to absorb oxygen so that is what we have to see 
Now, specialized organs for oxygen absorption are present in many, but not all. Now, for some of the animals, like for example, their body surface or their skin, they act as the organ for oxygen absorption. They do not have any special organ for this purpose. Right? Now, the question is, if I say that, okay, some organisms have a specialized um, some uh, animals have specialized organs for oxygen absorption. What kind of specialized organs they should be? I mean, what should be the characteristics of these specialized organs? Now, they should be able to help in absorption of oxygen. So, that is the first point. So, it should help in absorption of oxygen. Now, if you want absorption to be more, then the surface area should be more. Right? Because anyways, we know that wherever you want more absorption, the effective surface area should be more. So that is one requirement. The second requirement is that since we want, when we say absorption of oxygen, we mean to say that oxygen should come inside and at the same time carbon dioxide should also go outside. So basically we want exchange of gases to take place across the specialized organ. Right? So this should be placed inside the body well protected so if you are actually having a specialized organ a critical exchange of gases is taking place so for this exchange of gases to take place this organ should be well protected so one question is it, one point is that it should be well protected but at the same time it should be in contact with air like what I'm trying to say is now oxygen is present in the air. Now whichever organism has a specialized organ for respiration, that organ has to be touched, has to be in contact with air, only, that, only then it will be able to take in oxygen present in air. But at the same time, since that organ is actually involved in the exchange of gases, so that is a very critical organ. So it should also be well protected inside the body. So both of these need to be taken care of. It should be well protected. I mean, it should not be very much exposed on the surface. At the same time, it should be in contact with air. So for that purpose, what is the solution? There can be a tube-like structure which can connect this organ to the air. For example, this is the specialized organ and if you have a tube-like structure like this and then this can be in contact with the air. So, uh, so this organ is in contact with air through this tube at the same time the organ is well protected inside the body. So with all these you might be understanding why do we have, why is the construction of lungs like that. So the lungs are also constructed in such a way that lungs are well protected inside our body. At the same time they are connected out to the atmosphere through the nostrils. Now how the nostril is connected to the uh, lungs that we will see when we talk about the human respiratory system. So here I am just telling you what are the characteristics that should be present in any specialized organ for respiration in an animal. And also uh, the respiratory surface, the surface through which this absorption is taking place, that respiratory surface should be permeable. That is, it should allow gases to pass through it because that is our main purpose that oxygen should be able to go in, carbon dioxide should be able to come out. So it has to be permeable to the gases and it, it would be better if it is thin because if it is thin, exchange of gases becomes easier. So they just need to, the gases need to cross a thin membrane. But if the membrane itself is very thick, so again that is going to consume time and that is going to consume a lot of effort. So surface through which gaseous exchange occurs is known as the respiratory surface. So if when you talk about respiratory surface, these are some of the desired uh, characteristics of respiratory surface that they should be thin and they should be permeable to gases. So these are some of the points that should be kept in mind when you look at the specialized organs for oxygen absorption in different terrestrial animals. So now let us quickly see how different terrestrial animals respire. So let's talk about the unicellular organisms like an amoeba or if you talk about paramecium 
or hydra so all these lower animals they do not have any specific organs or they do not have specialized organs for respiration so in their case the respiration occurs through their body surface so their body surface itself is the respiratory surface so their body surface must be must be having a very thin wall their membrane has to be thin for efficient gas exchange and also they are permeable to gases that is why their body surfaces are able to act as respiratory surfaces now if you talk about insects now insects have another way of respiration they have a system of tracheal tubes which is often known as tracheal system that is they have a network of tube like structures through which the oxygen moves throughout the body and they also have small holes on the lateral side of their body which are known as spiracles so spiracles and that system of tube like trachea together help in the exchange of gases and transport of gases throughout the body so that is how they get oxygen so the tracheal system is nothing but a network of air tubes you can say again if you talk about amphibians they also use skin for diffusion their skin acts as a respiratory surface and also they have lungs they have both the things so they have a specialized organ like lungs and they all their skin itself also act as a respiratory surface now if you talk about even a more advanced animals like human beings they have specialized structures called lungs now when we talk about the human respiratory system we will actually see how the air is taken in and how or which pathway the air follows to reach the lungs right so these are some of the uh, ways by which different terrestrial and aquatic animals undergo respiration thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again